get to there, you can't get there. You tried him, he couldn't get to there. You tried her, she couldn't get to there. You tried them, they couldn't get to there. You tried it, you, it couldn't get to there. You tried a different place and it couldn't get to there. I recommend Jesus. And he will take you. He will definitely take you. Take you to the top. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, choir. Thank you. Why don't we thank our choir, our host of, of choir members. Thank our host of choir members today. Thank you, Lord, for using what we have. Again, I want to thank Sister Williams for being a part of our, our service today and, and helping us to move forward. And I do, I do owe an apology, and I need to send a long-distance thank you to Brother Tony Williams, who accompanied us on, on last week. I need to send a long-distance uh, uh, appreciation to him for playing on our piano on last week. Amen? Amen. He is protecting us as we stand <laughs> this morning. He's protecting us in this nation. And let me tell you, with what's going on in our nation today, we need some military folks to protect us. Amen? And we thank God that he has chosen to protect us as we worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. Let me call your attention again to... Uh, Genesis chapter 19, verses 23 through 26. Genesis in the Old Testament. If you can't find it, just move over. Don't, don't mention it. Just move over and peep on somebody else's mind. Genesis chapter 19, verses 23 through 26. Genesis chapter 19. Verses 23 through 26. When you found it, you will discover these words. The sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zoar. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. So he overthrew these cities. Can you, can you fix that? I'm sorry. Let's look at verse number 25. So he overthrew these cities, all the plains, all the inhabitants of the cities, and what grew on the ground. But his wife looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. I want to talk about don't look back. Don't. Don't look. Look back. All right. Come on, Doc. Come on now. A familiar movie that most of us, at least 99% of us in the room, is familiar with is Tyler Perry's movie, The Diary of a Mad Black Woman. In this movie, Tyler Perry depicts a lawyer and his wife at odds. In the movie, this man is very successful. He's a criminal court lawyer, and he really got it going on. He has the house, he has the wife, and then he has a woman on the side. In the movie, he mistreats his wife. So she began to put all of her stuff, all of her experiences, in a diary. It kind of goes like this. Dear diary, on day number one, he cursed me out. Dear diary, on day number two, I discovered that he had somebody on the side. Dear diary, I'm at the point where I'm about to break. If I don't get any help, dear diary, I'm going to give up on myself and on him. As the movie goes on, you will find out that corruption can overtake you. He had all the things that he liked, all the things that he needed, and all the things he wanted. 
But one day he represented a certain criminal. And he did not get him off and the criminals were sinners to prison. In the courtyard, at the court before the day was over, he shot him and the lawyer became paralyzed. And the same woman that he dogged out. The same woman he mistreated. Well, sister, I got some amens right about then. The same woman that he did wrong had to take care of him. But you know, sometimes when you're corrupt, you never learn anything. Regardless of what happens to you, sometimes corruption just overtakes you. Say that, say that, God. And because he was so corrupt, even in a wheelchair, he began to throw her food back at her. He began to talk down to her. And he began to mistreat her all over again. Now this is the part that most African American women love. When she got sick and tired. Of being sick and tired. Oh, you're right. Come on now. She filled the tub up with water. And she she started the whirlpool of going with him. She took a running start with the wheelchair hung out in front of her. Jammed it into the bathtub and he went flipping over into the tub. He created his own, his very own whirlpool that day. As the water filled up, he began, he began to, to bubble up in the water. And his, his breath began to make bubbles in the water. I know, I know women, that's the part that you really like and, and you right, really like to show him that uh, <laughs> don't tell me. But that's really not the moral of the story. All right, now. The moral of the story is forgiveness. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The moral of the story is that if you turn to God, yeah. he can take you to the top. Yeah. The moral of the story is that if you stop acting out and you stop being disobedient to God, then God will bless you. Amen. Say that again, Doc. As the story moves on, we see the preacher standing and preaching and the young man walking down the aisle giving his life to God. I just want to tell you, when you give your life to God, God is able to change you, but the circumstances you put yourself in sometimes will not change. That's right. That's right. And she thought, I mean, he thought that since he had come to God, that his wife ought to take him back just like he was. That's right. But there was another yeah. waiting in the wings that had treated her right. Yes. Let me just park right here, brother and sister, and say to you, yeah. what goes around, yeah. comes around. Yeah. And it's at the time that you cannot, you will not be able to afford it. Sure, you're right. Now he's with the Lord, and that's a good thing, but she's gone because another man has found her yeah. to be a good yeah. thing. Yeah. All right, right. Mm -hmm. Well, preacher, what does that have to do with the text. Well, the text deals with forgiveness. The text deals with God dealing with the sins of a people. The text deals with the fact that when you are corrupt and you hang around those who are corrupt, you will love corruption. You see, sin feels good. Sin looks good. Sin acts good. Sin it makes your mouth water. Sin gets your attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you don't watch it, you are love sin. You hang out with sin long enough, sin will take you farther than you intended to go. Sin will make you stay longer than you intended to stay. And sin will cost you more than you can afford to pay. Let me tell you, sin is on the prize. When we look at the text, we, we look 
at Sodom and Gomorrah and we relate Sodom and Gomorrah directly to homosexuality, but I stopped by on my way to the rapture to let you know that it wasn't just a homosexuality thing. I told you on last week it was a modern day Houston. It was an ancient day car wreck where folk were doing anything, any way they wanted to do. It just wasn't homosexuality. And some of us in the church have come to the point, if I escape lesbian activity, if I escape homosexuality, I'm doing good. But the fact of the matter is, if you're going to be biblically sound, and hermeneutically correct, you got to accept the fact that these folk had other problems. Right. You see, they enjoyed the luxuries of the day. Yes, yeah. sir. Inside. They enjoyed the nice things inside. All right. They enjoyed prosperity inside. When you talk about Lot and Abraham, you're not talking about a bunch of vagabonds. You're not talking about men who don't have uh, wealth. You're talking about men who are filthy rich. Yeah, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. And Lot ended up inside. Yeah. Mm. Let right. me just say to you today, it doesn't matter what you have, sin is knocking at the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter how wealthy you are, doesn't matter how dressed up you are, sin is sin is sin. Yeah, yeah. In Solomon, they had comfortable security. They had livestock in Solomon. They had plenty of food in Solomon. They didn't have to worry about Anything at all inside. All right. I mean, Mrs. Lott has gotten used to something. Is there anything in your life that you got used to? All right. How you dress. How you walk. Oh, God. How you talk. All right. How you live. What you drive is all inside. The problem in Sodom is that the people have become arrogant in Sodom. Mm -hmm. They come there come like church folk. Mm -hmm. They have become prideful in Sodom. They have become to a point where they disobeyed God and thought they could do anything to anybody any type of way in Sodom. Mm -hmm. They have become haughty, heavy, and high man. Inside. But the problem is, even though they had a lot of food, they did not support the poor, neither did they support the hungry. Mm -hmm. Inside. Mm -hmm. They were doing their own thing. They kind of like folk in Houston where you don't get to know your neighbors because you're doing your thing and they're doing their thing. All right. The other day, God said, hey, well, well, that's their thing. Let them do it. It's not, high, it's, not, it's not a problem to me. Let them do their thing. Let them act any kind of way they want to act. And I ask the question. If you're riding on the seashore and you launch out into the sea, in the sea, in a boat together, and both of you are in the boat, He's doing his thing on one end, you doing your thing on the other end. Now you're about 60 feet out into the, to the sea. You're having a good time. The wind starts blowing. Now you're about three miles out of the sea. And all of a sudden, your, your boat mate takes out a black and decker drill, sticks it in the boat, and starts boring a hole in the boat. Is it still your problem or just his problem? Are you concerned now? Are you? And that's how sin is. We ought to be able to hold each other accountable to our sin. We ought to be able to call our friends out and look at them to their faces and say, you're wrong and you know you're wrong. We have to do as Paul has done to Peter. He confronted him. The Bible says he confronted him head on face to face and said, that ain't the way God will have it. All right. Yeah. We look at the text, we find unnatural affection in Sodom. Yeah. We have arrogance in Sodom. All right. We have selfishness in Sodom. Okay. We have found ourselves in Sodom on a regular basis. My question to you this morning, are you in Sodom? Mm -hmm. Is Sodom in you? Have you been 
corrupted by the things of this world because many of us are corrupted by the things in our environment and we look to be just like they are. We look at the text, verse 23. We need to understand that we need to be able to be obedient to God. In verses 17 and verse 22, I said on you on different occasions that we must always follow the instructions of God. We must be obedient to God at all costs. And it doesn't matter if your family member is doing it, it doesn't matter if your friends are doing it, your dogs, your cronies, your girl, your boy is doing it, it doesn't matter, you are to obey God at all costs. Yes, yeah. It is clear in verses 17 and 22, the instructions are, run for your lives. Don't look back. Don't stop anywhere on the plane. Run to the mountains or you will be swept away. Right. Verse 22 says, hurry up. Run for it. If you don't, you'll be swept away. All right. Yeah. Let me tell you, when I know danger is approaching, mm -hmm. when pain mm -hmm. is on the horizon, Brother Evan Williams says, run from pain. <laughs> Get out the way of pain. Yes, sir. You can say you like pain, but let me tell you, pain can become so intense yes, that the strongest man will break down. Oh, yes. I told you, I told you that when, when a, a football player, big old husky football, big old stinking nasty husky football player can be running down the field at full speed, he's right at the cups of making a touchdown, and if a little bitty child and horse hit at that time, the touchdown doesn't matter anymore. Right. Yeah. That muscle brings that 280 pound, six foot five man to his knees and he's flopping around because he has no control no, right. of his pain. No, right. Yeah. Right. They tell me that a woman is, is at the brink of death when she gives birth to a child. She's hanging by a thread in between life and death. And then the rapture get to be five years old and disobey her and sasses her out. That's a problem. Yes, sir. She has gone through excruciating pain. Pain that none of us as men can even imagine. Amen. And guess what? We don't even want to imagine. It's because whenever there's trouble, whenever there's pain, whichever, whenever there's disaster, you need to run for your life. Yeah, yeah. Young boys, girls that are in church, you better run for your life. Mm -hmm. Girls, boys that's hanging out on the cut, you better run for your life. Man. The Bible teaches to be not unequally yoked. It means you need to do a full-fledged investigation before you even say hello. You need to pray. God, you need, if you have children that are a half a year old right now, you ought to be praying over them. Lord, send people in their lives that will be a blessing to them. And if you think your child is going to get married, you ought to be praying. If it's a girl, you ought to be praying for a boy. That God will sanctify and that God will move upon his life that he can lead her in a righteous way. If it's a boy, you ought not tell him to, to sow his raw oats. You need to tell that boy, I'm praying for you. Get him down on the side, on his knees, and have him pray for himself and pray for his future wife. Yeah, yeah. We serve an almighty God, an awesome God, a God who knows what he's doing when we don't have a clue. Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah. So first of all, you ought to be praying. Mm -hmm. yeah. Secondly, internet can check out anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. And whether you think you in there or not, you in there. Mm -hmm. All right. Matter of fact, when I put Rosa Davis in, it tells them, tells me it was, she was married to Matthew A. Davis. He was about 75 years old. He's deceased. They have four biological children together. Then it tells you the address. 
And then it tells you how long they've been there. Let me tell you, you have no excuse by being duped by somebody. Amen. While you trying to get his zodiac sign, you better get his name and his birthday. While you trying to talk about, well, you know, Corpus, Corpus Corns and, and Pisces, they, we can't get together. You better be concerned about his background and what family he came from. Why are you concerned about, ooh, he sure is tall, dark, and handsome. I told you, you better be looking at Mr. Short, Red, and Wrinkle when he got something in his heart. All right. Yeah. Investigation. You ought to be praying. You ought to be investigating. The, the instructions are run for your life. Don't look back. Don't stop on this plane. Whatever you do, get out of here. All right. First of all, Lot had some son-in-laws that thought he was just joking. Mm -hmm. Said to you, there are some people that were with you in 2019. You can't take them over in 2020. All right. Show you right. There are some friends that you had that have shown you who they are. And you still trying to make them something else. Let me tell you, sister, if his mom and dad, if his community didn't make him, you can't make him. All right. We still got 50-year-old women trying to change 60-year-old men. Let me tell you, give up, baby. Leave it alone. It's over. Amen. <laughs> Run for your life. Come on, Doc. Come on, Doc. Don't stop. And we got blocked. Now you can block his text message. You can block his email. You can, you can, you can kill it at the, at the roots. All right. Run for your life. The instructions is to run. My next point is, don't let the memories of your past abort your present and your future. All right. Yeah, yeah. Don't let the memories of your past Abort your presence and your future. The problem is, we looking at the good old days. And man, I could really do that. Well, you were 18, you're 55 now. You can't do what you used to do. You're not fooling me, and you show sure ain't fooling anybody else. You need to try to do this, brother. Sometimes I go home after church, I still got my suit on, and they're, they're playing basketball on the side of the road or they're running and racing. I get in the race, but I don't get in the race to win. I get in the race to create a relationship. See, you must know your limitations. I go down there and pull up. I can't work. They pull up. They just get on the cane and they go to, go to school the next day. If I pull up, I'm done. I just can't heal like I used to heal. You must know your limitations, and when you learn your limitations, you ought to be discreet about who you take with you in the midst of it. Amen. It is easy to get attached to the memories of yesterday. It is easy to, to act like you still a little child. Oh, you're right. It is easy to shut your responsibility and act like you don't have a responsibility. Let me say something to you, young folk. Don't get in a hurry to get grown. Enjoy whoever is buying the bacon and eggs, whoever is buying the sausage now, whoever is buying the drink now, enjoy that moment. Because your time is coming and you ain't going to want to do it. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy. Don't get in a hurry. And then you got children who still live at home at the house with mom and daddy talking about them grown. Let me tell you when you get grown. You when you go grown on your own, paying your own bills, doing your own thing, then you fully grown. That's right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. In my household, when we were at the house, the phone would ring sitting right next to dad. We were in the back room, and the phone is within inches of him. The phone starts ringing. Daddy will say, hey, boy, come here. And when Daddy called us, we couldn't walk. You know how children rub their feet and, 
and Sloan to get them. We couldn't walk. We had to run. We had to take off from the back room to get to the front room. He would call us all the way out of the back room to get the phone that's sitting next to me. He said, answer that phone. And every time he did it, we did it. We answered the phone. Now, I had some things in my mind. But guess what they say? In my mind. I had a question in my mind. Now, Daddy, why would you call me, stop me from doing all that I was doing as if I had something to do? And have me walk, run, brother, all the way from the back to pick up a phone that's two inches from you. That thought stayed in my mind. All right. You talking about a sanctified imagination? Uh, a lot of things I thought, I kept them sanctified in my mind. Folk back then would talk like, I brought you into this world. I'll take you out of here. We couldn't say, <clears throat> we couldn't roll our eyes. We couldn't shake our head. And then when we were told where not to go, we couldn't say, well, Daddy, the weeks are going. Well, Mama, the cars are going. They would remind us before we even said, I ain't, I, I, I'm, I'm not their parents, I'm yours. And so we did what we did according to their standards now. It's easy to get caught up in the environment. When your child go out somewhere, your child goes out somewhere, and when they come back, you see an attitude, you see an action that you don't approve of, and they have the audacity to gall to tell you, well, you know, I saw this and I picked this up somewhere. Right. You need to hurry up and say, take it back where you got it, because it doesn't, it's not going to exist in this house. Amen. In Sodom, they got used to stuff. Uh -huh. They got used to Everything that was going on inside. The men folk. It wasn't just for the old men that were fools. The Bible said the young men and the old men beat on Lot's door to take care of the angels. They didn't even want virgin women. They didn't want to have anything to do with the woman. Jesus. Let me just tell you again, so I know you heard me last week, but let me tell you, don't let anybody talk you down or shout you down on what you look like, what you act like, what you think like. Don't let anybody tell you you're not worthy of being with them. And if they walk off and leave you and have the nerve to say that you ain't going to get in well without me, you ought to jump and shout and praise the Lord. Call your pastor so I can jump and shout with you because if he thinks that way of you, then he's not deserving of you. I'll be shouting, you up. Oh, you're right. You, you begging a, a thug to come back. You, you, you begging somebody that don't have much going on for themselves, and certainly they don't have much going on for you. Yeah, right. Right. But this environment can corrupt you. This environment can, can get to you. Verse number 23. Don't allow your prosperity to negatively impact your present and your future. What I'm saying to you, you can't celebrate too long. You can't, you can't celebrate too long. You can't celebrate too long. When you have accomplished some things, thank the Lord and move on. Amen. You've seen the football player on his way to the end zone. He gets within the 10 yard line. He holds the ball up. He, he's waving the ball. And all of a sudden, he drops the ball shy of the end zone line. Another team comes and picks it up. It's because he celebrated too soon. And he celebrated too long. All right. You need to understand you can't, let, you can't afford to let your past negatively impact your future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not only can you not celebrate too long and too often, you need to forget about the dangers and forget about the things in your past simply because those things can hunt you the rest of your life. Yes, sir. Right. 
a lot of good women have passed up on good men because the last joker you had wasn't any good. A lot of good men have passed up on good women because they just can't get on the last one she had or he had. A lot of children have, have gotten to a point where they want to make sure that all of their friends agree with them being friends with somebody else. Don't, don't, let, don't, don't let your past memories negatively impact your future. All right. Because the past ought to be that, your past. Amen. And let me just plug this in here too. Oh, you know, they are my exes and I will always be a part of that family. Well, if they wanted you to be a part of that family, they would have saved you from being an ex. Oh, that's right. That's right. I know you're right. If, if, if you are an ex, you just get an ex. You done. They hang around having family meetings on you. Talking about, isn't she crazy that she's still coming around? Tell it, Doc. Tell it. Tell it. Isn't he a fool? He still thinks just because we call him our brother-in-law, he's still our brother-in-law. <laughs> Let the past go. You can't live in the past. Lot's wife lived in the past. The Bible says, the sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zohar, into a safe place. The idea here is Lot even had to lose his wife when she wasn't walking with God. That's right. yeah. Yeah. You need to walk with God regardless of what your spouse does. That's right. uh -oh. yeah, yeah. Yeah. You need to walk with God. God needs to be able to count on you yeah. when he can't just count on him. God needs to count on you when you she can't count on her. Lot has to, you know, some folks talk kind of like this. We gonna die together. Well, let me just tell you a secret. I know it's a secret. I know you don't know it. I ain't ready to get out of here. I take a bullet for Sister Davis. I stand up for her. But if she doesn't want to move past Sodom, I'm going to do what the angel has told me to do. I'm going to run, get in a hurry, get out of here. I'm going to catch her by her hand, catch her by her foot, and drag her as far as I can. Amen. Many of us are guilty of trying to take our children everywhere. We just have these dreams for our children. We have, and I've had them too, you know. You have these dreams, and some of us live our dreams through our children. Things that we didn't accomplish, we want to live them out. I mean, you wear the boy out. First of all, he doesn't want to be a football player. <laughs> Secondly, he ain't got the talent to be one. All right. Thirdly, coach ain't gonna let him do do even water boy duties. But we want to live our lives through our children when God is saying there's something greater for the child and there's something greater for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, sir. Right. Our next point is don't get satisfied. With what you've been through. Don't get satisfied. 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 I said to a group of men, y'all, y'all used to going at each other. Y'all, y'all used to fighting. You, you all used to, you used to hanging out together and patting each other on the back, and then you used to going to somebody else and down talking. I said, I'm not used to that, and I'm not getting ready to get used to that. You need to become men that will stand and hold each other accountable to their faces. Yeah, yeah. Walk right with them like God would have you to walk with them. But we get so used to stuff. God delivered me from preachers who stand in the pulpit, who preach a, a farewell, good well, or a welfare message so people will like them. Oh, I know how to pack the room. I know how to pack the room every Sunday. I can lie to you every Sunday. Girl, you said, girl, you need to come over here and hear my preaching. He told us, he told us that we're going to have, have plenty tomorrow. He told us that lessons are going to chase us down tomorrow. Matter of fact, he told us we're going to be the head and not the tail. And financially, we're going to be stable this week. I always reply, if you worked last week, you'll be financially stable next week. If you didn't work last week, forget about your finances. 
You need to be working this week while you're waiting on something to come from last week. Because what you plant, what you sow is what you reap. Yes, God does great things. He does miracles. But what you sow is what you reap. That's right. That's right. Our destinations are ahead of us, yes, sir. not behind us. Yes, sir. You ought to be going somewhere each morning. You get up. And it doesn't matter if you're retired. It doesn't matter if you're handicapped. It doesn't matter if you're on SSI. It doesn't matter if you have an income or not. God has left you in the earth for one more moment so you can be all that he wants you to be and you ought not be sitting up looking out the window doing the same old thing every day when God has given you a new morning, new mercies. You ought to have new atmosphere around you every day. Every day ought to be a newness about you. People change their hairstyles, but they don't change their attitudes. People change their clothes, but they don't change their goals. This is a new year. Every year, you know, folk come to the conclusion in the church, oh, this is my year of jubilee. Well, what was last year? Jubilee doesn't come but every 50 years. I mean, you last year, this time last year, you said it was your year of jubilee. And I watched you and I saw you do the same thing in 2019 that you did in 2018 and now you're about to get another year of jubilee. Yeah, All right. yeah, right now. If your jubilee looked like it looked last year, you may want to leave jubilee where she is. Yeah, yeah. Yes, this is the year of jubilee and we ought to believe God for everything we get. But God has us a part of his blessing. You have to be a participant with God. I never received a job sitting there at the house saying, God, give me a new job. God, give me a new job. I never received a job without being somewhat qualified, without somewhat dressed up. I never received a job walking in with, with an earring in my ear, with my britches sagging around my knees. And when they're giving me a tour of the job, I take two steps and then I got to stop it and pick them up. I never received a job when I, I had a hairstyle like everybody else. First of all, I had some things against me. My skin was my sin. And I had to make up for my skin. So I had to make sure I put my subject and my verb in agreement. I had to make sure that I dressed up better than everybody else dressed up. Right. I had to make sure I said, yes, sir, even to folk who, are, who were younger than I was because they had what I wanted. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Don't let the environment corrupt you. Uh -huh. Don't you be the class clown because you want to get a laugh. Yeah. Like class clowns says to bookworms 10 years from now, boss, what would you have me to do? A bookworm, a bookworm, you make fun of him, you, you, you joke about him, and, and all, all of a sudden, he's on the TV and he's accomplished great things. Leslie Ray Matthews, a surgeon in Atlanta, Georgia, graduated from high school with me, number one in his class. I asked y'all when he came to present his vitamin D uh, his vitamin D program, I asked y'all, who did y'all think was first, me or him? And y'all looked at me the way y'all looking at me right now. He graduated number one in his class. Ray Matthews was laughed at in school. Ray Matthews ran the mile relay in the mile in school. Ray Matthews ran cross country in school. And I can yet hear my friends in my ear saying, Ray needs to stop running because he, he comes in last place every time. But Ray never would stop. We went to Rolling Fork, Ray comes in last place. We go to Mount Bayou, Ray comes in last place. We go to South Haven, Ray comes in last place. We go to Jackson, Lake, Ray comes in last place. People begin to wonder, why is Ray Matthews constantly running this relay? Why is he still running this cross country?
countries, he ought to just quit, go home and get his books. But Ray was painting a picture in front of all of us. It doesn't matter how you come out. You got to stick to it and stick with it. The problem this day is that we are teaching young folk, whatever you don't like, you ought to quit it. Whatever don't suit your fancy, you don't have to do it. And when they get grown, the first job, when somebody calls them out of their name, they go home, then they come back to you and want you to pay their bills. Ray taught us that you got to stay with it. So on May 25th, 1981, when we walked across the stage, we had to sit there and listen to the valedictorian. Leslie Ray Matthews give us wisdom of how to succeed in life. Just three weeks ago, Ray Matthews flooded the internet and the news. He has just received his patent for vitamin D, for hemp, and for concussion protocol. The, the first man on the planet to receive such a patent because Leslie Ray Matthews stuck to it. Young people, our sin today is that we cannot take pressure and we don't know how to think under pressure. Yeah. You're going to have to put up with some things in order to make it in this world. Yeah. You're going to have to put up with somebody calling you a name. You're going to have to put up with somebody disrespecting you. You're going to have to put up with somebody acting a fool with you. You're going to have to put up with somebody passing over you for the promotion because you have a plan in your head, a plan in your heart. You just keep moving. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Don't look back. Don't stop. Hurry up. Run for your life. Another thing young folk got to get in a hurry. You can't be dapper with everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I know how to dap. I know how to walk with, with, with my dap. I, I get so low when I, when I really want to dap. You know, I climb around the house sometimes. And when I really want to dap, I know how to dap. I, I can get so low with my dap. <coughs> and I, I know how to do it. I, I know how to do it like a soul brother know how to do it. I know how to, I know how to do it like they did it on Shaft. I, I know how to do it like, what, like Curtis Mayfield did it. I can really, I know how to stroll. I could be almost laying flat to the ground when I stroll. But my stroll has never gotten me an education. My, my stroll has never gotten me a job. My stroll has never gotten me a house. My stroll has never gotten me a job nor a car. You have to make sure that there's a time that you turn foolishness off and put on your game face. There ought to be a time when you, you have come to the conclusion it's time to make things happen and the time is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know all of you in this room have come up with your New Year's resolutions. Don't let them go by March. Stick with your New Year's resolutions because if they were good enough to make, they're good enough to keep. Yeah, yeah. Good. Stick with it. Our destination is in front of us. Regardless of what is going on behind us, look, look at this lot. The Bible says in verse number 26 that she looked back behind her husband. And she looked back towards Sodom. Well, preacher, who are you talking to? You're not just talking to women with husbands. No, I'm not. I'm talking about your personal goals in your life. You got to make a difference where you are with who you're with and with who you're not with. It's a shame that 50% of the marriages in the church end in divorce as well as 50% of the marriages that are not in the church end in divorce. Oh, you're right. And that, that percentage is going up daily. Mm -hmm. It's because we have no stick to it. Yeah, yeah. And when you marry, let me tell you something, you're going to be challenged. Say amen, oh, brother. Amen. You will be challenged on every hand. I told you before that when I get through preaching, people walk up to me every day, every time. Oh, Pastor, we enjoyed that message. That was such a great message. But I'm, I'm well enough to know. I am sane enough to know. I have sense enough to know that I don't get the truth until I get in the car. Yeah, yeah. I didn't say get home. I said get in the car. We are going to be challenged on every end. Well, we, we worry about who's in office. 
But God had to allow some things to happen to bring us to our needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And right now, if you're not praying, you ought to be praying right now. You ought to be praying that we don't become a communistic country. We, you ought to be praying that we continue to have free flow worship. You, you ought to be praying that we can still drive cars on the right side of the road instead of the left side of the road. You ought to be praying that we can protect each other and not kill each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We ought to be praying for our nation. We ought to be praying for our communities and praying for our church. Yeah, yeah. And you ought to be praying for your pastor. Our destination is in front of us, not behind us. When God, verse number 24, when God gets rid of sin, he leaves no stone unturned. When God, when God wipes things out, he doesn't want us to look back. The Bible says that it rained brimstone and fire. The Bible says that he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. It came from heaven. It came from God. He overthrew the city in verse number 25. The inhabitants, he killed them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he killed everything that grew on the ground. No vegetation. No human being. And you got folk walking around here saying, uh, a loving God wouldn't do that. You got a decision to make. Your decision is where you want to go in life. Your decision is where you want to go after life. You have a decision to make. God doesn't want us to be saved on our way to heaven anyhow and live a life down here that's unfruitful. Jesus says that I have come that you may have life and that you might have it more abundantly. You want to have life on earth as well as life in heaven and you want this life on earth to be an abundant life. You want abundant life. Somewhere somebody was, was fooled when they told you, if I'm poor and broke, I'm going to heaven. Let me tell you something. Poor and broke has nothing to do with heaven. Poor and broke has only to do with what you have come to the conclusion. Men, women, boys, and girls have come to the conclusion, I was born in the ghetto, I'm going to stay in the ghetto. There's more to life than Houston, third ward, fifth ward. Houston, sir. South Park. It's more to life than, than that. You ought to want to get out and see some things. You ought to want to go some places. You ought to want to do some things with your life. And you can't do it without good, sound decisions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God want to bless you. Yeah, yes, but you can't keep on looking back. When God gets rid of things, he wipes out everything. Nothing is left. Your future depends on how you handle your present and how you handle your past. Somebody did you wrong. Somebody did something to you. You better let it go. Matter of fact, you shouldn't even be taking communion if you're still dragging up stuff that somebody has done to you. All right. Let it go. You're holding yourself hostage. You're holding yourself in prison. You thought you were imprisoning somebody else. But when you put somebody in prison in unforgiveness, you got to stay there and hold the key. Now, you can't get anything done, and you think they're not getting anything done. They go out of the window, and they're going to make somebody else's life miserable, and you still there holding the key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they're going to make somebody else's life abundant. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness. Yeah, yeah. Tyler Perry's movie is about forgiveness, about God forgiving, mm -hmm. about us forgiving each other. Mm -hmm. And we can't forgive with corruption and looking back. Right. Mm -hmm. Our final point today is Lot's connection mm -hmm. with Abraham saved his life. Mm -hmm. However, Mrs. Lot's connection with Lot did not save her. Yeah, yeah. I want to tell you it doesn't matter who you link up with. I told you earlier you need to make sure you link up with the right folk. But sometimes you can have the right things, the right amount of money, living in the right place, living in the, living in the, in the place you always wanted to live in, hanging out with the right person. But when you make the wrong decision, they are getting blessed and going on, and you are left behind. Yeah, yeah. 
I always said to this church, I want everybody in this church to be debt free. Mm -hmm. To owe nobody anything but to love them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want every member of this church to focus this year on becoming debt free. Don't tell me how much you have. Don't tell me how much debt you're in. Don't tell me how less you bring in. God says that he can bless you. you know, yes, sir. I want everybody in this church and everybody listening to me to become debt free because I want this church to become debt free. Yeah, yeah. Well, how are we going to do that? You're going to return 10% or more to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh, I lost 40%. Yeah. <laughs> the way you're going to do it, you're going to return 10% or more of your gross income to the Lord. Woman asked me, well, when I go, when I go to Arkansas, can I put my, my tithes in that church? <laughs> can I put my tithes in that church? Because you know they preaching the word of God too. I said, well, let me ask you a question. If your husband get paid, can he take the check across the street to the woman across the street? <laughs> well, I felt that really good right. <laughs> we have to be faithful to God. We have to return to God what God asked us to return to him. And as we return it to God, God is able to bless us. And he can bless us regardless of what we do. God can do more with 10% than we can do with 90%. Yeah, you're right. I want to become like a friend of mine's uncle. A friend of mine's uncle gives away, he gives away 90% and lives off 10%. Somebody says, oh, I don't want to do that. Well, let me just tell you the logic here. If I can live off 10% and give away 90%, that means there's more from where that came. That means I never have to worry about anything because everything will be blessed and everything, everywhere I go, people will see the blessings all around me. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I want to return to the Lord 90% and live off 10% because when I get to that point, guess what? I'm balling and shot calling. Yeah, yeah. And God is able to do it. Amen. Lot was blessed and his life was spared because of his connection with Abraham. Yeah, yeah. Lot's life was spared because of his connection with Abraham. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you, my life has been spared because of my connection with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. All right. It's because of what Jesus did for me. It's not because I'm so smart. It's not because of my degrees. It's not because of what I wear. It wasn't because of my mom and my daddy. It's because of what Jesus has done for me. Over 2,000 years, he died on a skull hill called Calvary. He died just for me. If there was no one else on planet Earth for me, my friend, my brother, Jesus would have died for me. He did it for me. No, you're right. You have to make it personal in your life. Jesus died for me over 2,000 years ago. Mean men took him and nailed him tight to the cross. Mean men took him and they raised him high and they dropped him low. Mean men took my Lord and my God. They killed him on an old rugged cross. It was on Calvary's hill. They killed my Lord and your God. It was on the skull hill called Calvary. They killed him over 2,000 years ago. All right. It was for me and it was for you. Yes, sir. They took him off the cross. They laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb because he didn't need it too long. Early that Thursday morning, he got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. He walked on resurrection soul. He says to me that he took my sin and he planted them far away from me. And when he rose from the dead, he told me that I can rise again. Yes, sir. Good evening, warriors. If I don't see you anymore, don't look back. Run for your life. Get out of this place. Leave it alone. Move on and watch God bless you. Don't stick to the same old stuff you've been doing. Get some freshness. Get some newness. And watch what God does. Oh, yeah. God bless you. And God keep you. Thank you Lord. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. Will you come to Jesus? The door is open. If you don't know Jesus, this is a good time to get to know him. If you don't know Jesus, this is a good moment to, to 
follow him. If you never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your moment. Why don't you come just as you are? I hear you. But preach, I gotta wait till I get it right. Let me tell you, you'll never get it right. You gotta give it to Jesus and let him get it right for you. The door is open. If you need motivation, it's gonna come through Jesus. If you need hope, it's gonna come through Jesus. If you need strength, it's gonna come through Jesus. If you're going to reach your goal, it's going to come through Jesus. The door is open. The invitation is extended. I want you to come to Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The door is open. The door is open. The door is open. The door is open. Thank you, God, for, for another chance. Well, we thank God for who he is and what he has already done. He's heard the awesome and the amazing.